Hi, Tracy here with BibleJournalingMinistries.com and in this video, I'm gonna do a review of the One Step Closer Bible presented by Candace and Spring. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. First off, I wanna thank Dayspring for sending this to me. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions on this Bible and I haven't had a chance to buy it myself. And so I reached out to them to ask them if they wouldn't mind sending it to me. And they said, absolutely, we'd be happy to send it to you so that you can share what's inside of it. So thanks so much, Dayspring. I appreciate that you sent this to me and I'm excited to share it with you guys finally because I haven't had a chance to take a look at it and I've gotten so many questions on it. Okay, so. It retails for $64.99. It's an NLT translation. That means it's a new living translation, more of a thought for thought or a dynamic equivalent type Bible. Um, if you think of Bibles on a spectrum of word for word translation or thought for thought translation, the NLT kind of goes on this side, which I think it's important to read both formal equivalent and dynamic equivalent Bibles. I think um, for me, by reading more of the thought for thought, Bibles, it makes it easier for me to read the formal equivalent Bible. So if that helps you out, I think it's a good idea to have a mixture um, of a few Bibles to read. And if you do, you can't get a hold of, you know, a, a certain Bible, you can always look it up on the internet. Uh, there are plenty of translations online, but I find it very helpful to read multiple translations. So um, if that's helpful to you, it comes in a box that's pretty, I mean, it's a nice gift box. It's got a picture of um, Candace here on the back. Uh, and it includes a Q&A session with her, help finder index, application notes, books, introduction, uh, 177 Bible promises, and of course the New Living Translation. So let's go ahead and open it up. Check it out. If you guys don't know who Cameron, um, Candace Cameron Burr is, she is DJ from Full House back in the day, if you used to watch that. She also has starred on many movies in Hallmark, and um, she's just a nice, I, I like, I like I like her. <laughs> so the Bible, I mean, it smells nice coming out of it. I don't know if it is leather or if it's leather like. It, I mean, you can fool me all day long. It's got a beautiful gold leafing or gold edging. On it's got three, three bookmarks. Oh my goodness. Yay. I, I'm I know. Like, isn't it crazy? Like the first thing I notice it has three bookmarks because I'm always flipping back and forth in my Bible. And so to have one that I can just flip back and forth is very helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up. It's got a beautiful kind of pink coral cover on the inside. Uh, it's got a very beautiful design presented to you page. With Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Uh, a little information, a little letter from Candace here. She's super cute. She says, God has a plan for how he'd like each of us to spend the next 24 hours. He made the day with you in mind. You can trust what he has awaiting for you. Amen. Amen. Um, talks a little bit about why you should read the Bible. Uh, what does it mean to be saved? So important to have this in there, guys. I love this. So some information there we can read. And then we have the One Step Closer title page. I love the hexagon. I mean, just the design of this Bible. I mean, I would carry this around anywhere. I mean, it is just fancy. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is just fancy, fancy. This is gonna be my fancy Bible that I bring to church. Okay, so One Step Closer. So let me just kind of go through this with you guys. Okay, so then we have the contents. This font, guys, is an eight-point font. I know that some of you guys have been asking about that, so hopefully that's helpful. Um, you have the alphabetical listing of Bible books, the contributors, read this first, then you have your Old Testament, New Testament, then you have your Help Finder Index, um, great Bible passages to study and memorize. Oh, well, I probably need to do that. Great Bible stories for discovering God's truth, a note to the readers, introduction to NLT, and the translation team. So... Here are the alphabetical list of Bible books and the contributors. And then here's the read the first page. Looks like there's going to be some promises of God in here, which I'm excited to read. This is nice. Okay. Huh. So we have like at the beginning, before we even get to Genesis 1-1, we have like a little overview or introduction. So it tells you a little bit about the book of the Bible. That is really nice. And then it kind of gives you an outline. 
I love this because whenever you're reading books of the Bible, you don't know what's included. If you understand what the outline is, I think it makes it a lot easier to read. Um, so it just tells you here in Genesis what you'll be reading about, how God created the world, how sin entered the world, the story of Noah and the ark, the story of Abraham, the story of Isaac, the story of Jacob, the story of Joseph. Very cool. Um, key verses in Genesis. They also include that as well. So um, important to kind of think through. Then you have the account of creation that's in verse 1-1. One, one. Okay, and then you have little spaces for note-taking. In terms of the, the size of this, now this isn't your standard Bible journal. This is really kind of a note-taking Bible, um, and the margin is actually smaller than what we're used to. So this is about a little under one and a half inch and then about three and a half centimeters. So, and then on top, on the height here, you have eight and a half inches high, and then centimeters, 22 centimeters. In terms of actual line length, a little bit over one inch line length, uh, about three, one, two, three centimeters line length. So you're really just gonna do a little few notes here or a little bit of design here if you're gonna to keep to the edge. Um, then we have rest here. Um, and then we have the Bible, then we have um, a topic here, sexuality, temptation, family motives, salvation. And here's one of the promises. Promises from God, I will never again destroy all living things. As the earth remains, there will be planting, harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. I love the promises of God. Um, I just, I love, I love to just, and especially if they're called out, it's really nice. Also, I know that some of you guys are going to ask me, is it red lettered? So let me just kind of check for you. I think it is, but let me just double check. Yes, it is. So for those of you guys who like the red letters, and the red letters will have whatever Jesus has said in red text. So that's just really nice. It, it calls your attention to it. Um, make sure that you know it's really important. <laughs> Everything in the Bible is really important, but some of us want to know specifically what did Jesus have to say about this. And so we look at what is in the red letter. Uh, this is a double column Bible. So for those of you guys who like that, it's important to you to have, you know, two different columns as opposed to one column. Um, it just kind of helps. It's a little easier on the eyes for some of us. It's a it's a double column layout. It does, it is flat. So I, you know, once you, it lays flat, so that's nice. So that if you're writing, it will lay flat and you can write on it. In terms of the page thickness, you guys, the page thickness is like a standard Bible. So if you've ever, if you have a standard Bible, it's not a journaling Bible. It's more like the page thickness of a standard Bible. Bible. So pretty thin page. That doesn't mean you can't write on it. It just means the pages are thinner. So if you're using a dark pen, you're likely going to be able to see on the other side. So you can use a pencil if you want to. I per I don't mind. I'll use a, a pen because for me, I want it to stay in there. But if you want, if you're concerned about bleed through stuff like that, then use a light pencil and you should be fine in terms of just taking your notes. There are some, like at the end of chapters, you'll have more space if you're doing things like Bible journaling, adding paint to it, things like that. You'll be able to do that, um, you know, mostly towards the end of each of the chapters if there is space available, um, as well as probably in the Psalms and things like that. So that is nice to know and have as well. So as I'm looking on their site, they do say this is a leather-like cover. Again, you can, you can you can fool me all day long. It smells like leather, so it's leather-like. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is a hand stitch cover is what it says. It says hand stitch, no kidding, hand stitch. Who knew? With gold foil, that's very nice. Um, deluxe Permalex end sheets. So these must be the Permalex end sheets that are included. It says one and a fourth wide margins for journaling and note taking, three ribbon markers. Yes, we've talked about all that so far. Um, let me just double check. I want to make sure that I that I have kind of shared as much as I can with you. Um, okay, so let's just keep going here. So we have again, in just like I said earlier, we do have an introduction. We'll have what you are reading about, key verses, um, and then you go into actually reading it. So that's nice. Okay, so 
let's talk about the helps. Actually, let's go. So once we are done with the Bible, there's a lot more material that's still here. So I think that's nice to have. So once we're finished with Revelation, and I'm trying to see if this is if they include a testing page. This isn't a testing page. So, and when I say testing page, it's like usually something in the back of your Bible that you can like test your markers on to see if they bleed through. Um, they don't have one here. Usually it's not, we just call it a testing page. It's really just an extra blank page. Um, they don't have one, but feel free to use the back one here that has the Bible translation team if you wanna test out any of your products and what works on there or not. Okay, let's look at this Help Finder Index. It says, when God inspired the Bible, he was thinking of you and your needs. And because God made you, he knows what you need to make your life all it should be. He put the answers to meet your needs in the Bible. But wouldn't you like an easy way to find God's answers? To me, yes, <laughs> absolutely. You have found it here in this Help Finder Index. This is the place to find Bible help for daily needs, arranged alphab alphabetically by topics. Each topic includes a summary several questions to help you put your need into words, a list of Bible verses to look up that will speak directly to your particular issues, and a short comment to help apply those verses to your life. In addition, some of the Bible verses are paired with corresponding application notes on the page indicated. We hope you will find this Help Finder Index gives you a lifetime of joy as you search God's word and see how wonderfully he wants to meet your daily needs. Awesome, okay. So let's just find one and we'll go through it together. I'm just gonna randomly pick one. Okay. Okay, so this one is miracles. So help finder about miracles. I gotta go to the beginning to show you what's all included. I landed on miracles, yay. Okay, so here we are. Um, if we want to learn more about miracles, and we'll go, we'll go to this page, this is page 1375, and it says miracles, and it talks a little bit about miracles here, it talks about what are miracles, and then they have the verse and information on it, and then there's some questions, key questions, can God really do the impossible? And then it has, let me just show you, for, and then it has like different verses. So Zechariah 8, 6, this is what the Lord of Heaven army says. All this may seem impossible to you now, but is it impossible for me? So it just kind of tells you like where in the Bible um, you might find the answers to that question, okay? And how does God do miracles? And then they give you Daniel 6, 27, Micah 7, 15. They actually give it to you, so you actually do not have to go look these up. They're actually right here written out for you, which is kind of nice. It's a definitely a time saver. Um, is there something wrong with me if I pray for a miracle and God doesn't grant one? Well, ah, yeah. So then there's some verses here for you to look up. What keeps me from seeing more miracles in my life? How do I deal with impossible situations? So a lot of different questions. Um, and um, where they are in the Bible. I love they don't tell you the answer. Like I love that they give you scripture and then you can work with the Holy Spirit to understand that scripture. You go, so you know, here's Revelation 3, 8 under miracles. So the question was, excuse me if I go back, how do I deal with impossible situations? And then they have Revelation 3, 8. I know all the things you do. I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength that you obey yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Um, and then they give you a help here. Start by doing what you can do to the best of your ability. God promises he won't abandon you, but will help you in your impossible situations. If he wants a task done, he will be, enable you to do it. When you live by God's principles, you remain in the shadow of his helping arms. I like that, okay. Uh, let's do another one. So there's questions and Oh, and then we go into the promises. So from there, we go promises up from God, Ephesians 3.20. Now, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty work, mighty power at work within us to accomplish in, infinitely more than we might ask or think. Um, so then they go into promises. All right, let's do another one now that we're kind of more comfortable with the way this is all work set up. Okay, so I just turned to money. 
So money is the next help topic that we'll be looking at. So it tells you a little bit about, you know, a little bit about money. So here it says, money is neither good or nor bad. It is a neutral medium of exchange. Throughout the Bible, we read matter of factly about money being earned, borrowed, and spent. However, money has come to represent wealth, power, and status. As such, it has a tendency to wield extraordinary power and control over our lives. So it just gives you a little bit more about thoughts on money. And then there are questions. What is the proper perspective towards money? And then there's like a ton of verses here. So let me give you an example of one. Uh, let's do uh, Matthew 6.21. It says, so Matthew 6.21, then they quote the Bible. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be. And then it goes into um, kind of helps, which is why it's called a help index. So the help is, it says, the Bible mentions many wealthy people who love God while saying nothing negative about the amount of wealth they owned. Then they give you examples, Abraham, David, Joseph, Joseph, Lydia. Scripture doesn't focus on how much money you can or cannot have, but it rather focuses on what you do with the money that you do have. Jesus made one thing clear, wherever your money goes, your heart will follow after it. So work hard and succeed without guilt, but make sure to work just as hard at finding ways to please God with your money. Um, there's a couple other verses that, that like, for example, don't have um, a help with it. So example would be uh, Psalm 23, one, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. So apparently they thought that was self-explanatory. Um, Matthew 6, 21, no one can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and be enslaved by money. Um, so yeah. There's also ones that actually tell you to go to notes. So this one, Luke 18, 22, sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. See note on page 942. 942, 942. I'm going to go to the help so we can see. Page 942. So you guys are seeing this for the first time. Like I'm seeing it for the first time. It's not. I, I haven't like gone through this at all. I like whenever I do my reviews, I like to give you like straight up what I'm thinking right out of my mouth. So it doesn't like it. Sometimes it's it's nice, but sometimes it's not so nice. You guys have heard reviews where I'm just like, eh, no thanks. Um, okay, 942. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So here's the note on money on Luke 18, which is Luke 18, see note on 942. So it says, what does your money mean to you? Although Jesus wanted this man to sell everything and give his money to the poor, this doesn't mean that all believers should sell all their possessions. Most of Jesus's followers did not sell everything, but use their possessions to bless others. This story shows us that we must not let anything keep us from following Jesus. We must remove anything that gets in the way of serving him fully. If Jesus asked you, would you give up your house or car? Would you live somewhere else, a place that wasn't convenient or didn't feel as comfortable as where you live now? Your reaction may show your attitude towards money, wherever, whether it is your servant or your master. Wow, that's convicting. Very awesome. Okay, so that's kind of, you know, the different, there's, wow. Look at, look at the answer. So when it comes to the proper perspective towards money, and they're giving you like all the different verses, look how many verses are in the Bible just about money alone. And just, just to answer that one question, and then we go into the next one. Why don't I ever seem to have enough? Is debt a sin? In what other way should I be caution, cautious regarding debt? How can I best use my money? What is the relationship between wealth and contentment? And then we have the promises of God. Um, <clears throat> First Timothy 6, 17, in the promises of God, it says, Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for enjoyment. Amen. He does. He does, you guys. He does. We just have to, like, look around. We, we you know, we can get so, like, caught up in things sometimes that we don't look up and go, you know, he's already given us everything that we need. Um, and we just need to be content in that and focused on what he has for us. So, and that doesn't mean you don't like go to work and just hang out at your house. No, I mean, 
you know, God will call you to do different things in your life. And some of that stuff requires more money than what you have today. So, you know, whatever God is calling you to do, he may even call you to have less money than you have today. Right. And maybe he, and, and what I mean by that is maybe he's calling you to give that away. Maybe you have a spiritual gift of giving and you give it away. Um, that's awesome. But maybe you're someone who doesn't have a lot of money and, um, you know, you, you desire, a lot of money. Well, you have to check your heart. You have to go through this section on money and really check your heart and see, you know, why is it that you want that money? Is it to follow God's will for your life? Did he give you a spiritual gift that requires more resources than you have today? Pray to the Lord. Really understand what the Holy Spirit has for you and then take that next step. Maybe that next step means you have to take on another job. There have been times in my life where I've taken on more than one job because the Lord has been directing me to do certain things. Um, so, and sometimes the Lord is like, look, be content. Like right now, there's nothing like right now there, you don't need a second job right now. Just get some rest. So, you know, this, the, the Bible is going to help you in the situations that you're in. If you use things like the help finder to kind of get you through that time. And it's just, you know, each, you know, the Bible says there are seasons in our lives, right? So not every time you're going to, you know, need to be talking about money. Sometimes you're going to want to learn about leadership. Sometimes you're going to need to know about help. Sometimes you're going to need to know about giving. Sometimes you need to know about family, right? It just depends on what you're working through in your life and what the Holy Spirit has for you. And so these are just helps, you guys. They're just here to help you. They're not, you know, they're not here to tell you what to do, right? So they give you help. But you know, the Lord will tell you what to do if you meet with him and you meet with him through prayer. You meet with him through Bible study. You meet with him through worship. You meet with him through things like Bible journaling. There's so many different ways to meet the Lord. So I encourage you to meet with the Lord today and every day in your life as much as possible. Meet the Lord because he will direct your steps um, according to his will, maybe not towards ours, maybe not towards things that we, you know, we want, but he will direct our steps and um and i think at the end of the day if you look back at least for me where i wanted something but he directed my steps a different way his way has always been better it's always been better maybe not according to this world maybe his steps meant that i didn't you know that i sold something too early and didn't make a lot of money off of it don't matter what i have now is way better than all that money like don't even care about it you know so the lord you know, whatever is in his will for you, you meet him there. Okay, you meet him there. All right, great Bible passages to study and memorize. Here's a bunch of different Bible verses, the Ten Commandments, um, God's greatness, God rules over all. I love that. This is nice. So if you're looking for passages that, that are great that you want to memorize, they have them here for you. Great Bible stories for discovering God's truth. So um, the creation, the curse, Cain and Abel, um, Jacob's dream, the birth of Moses, the burning bush. So like just different things that are great Bible stories uh, you might want to familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with. And then we have a note to readers here about the New Living Translation and the translation team. Very nice. And then the end, and let's weigh it so we know how much it weighs. It weighs two pounds, 3.7 ounces, so two pounds, four ounces. Really easy um, to bring with you to your church and just have maybe even, I mean, it's just gorgeous, guys. So I love it. Um, I think it's great. I hope that you will take a look at it. I hope that I answered all the questions that you guys have for me. Usually you're asking things like font size, is it red letter, um, is it double column, single column, all those things. I've answered them for you. But if I didn't answer a question for you, please put it in the comments below and I will definitely answer it for you. Also, let me know what you think about this review. If you do like these reviews, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, let me know what you think of the Bible. Do you have it? And what's your favorite part about it? What is the thing that you love to use about it? I will also put links down for you if you're curious. And um, if you want to learn more about it, I will put an affiliate link for you. If you decide to purchase the Bible within that affiliate link, it doesn't cost you more, but it does help our ministry out. So thanks so much in advance and you have a blessed week. Goodbye.